What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching Rod Tang versus Haggerty. Why are we watching this? Well, this is number two fight actually. Should have actually said that to start. But why are we watching this second fight between these two amazing Muay Thai athletes? Well, I actually want to put the emphasis on Haggerty because coming up, he is fighting for the Kickboxing Bantamweight World Championship. He already holds the Muay Thai World Championship. And now he's going to be challenging to become a two division or two sport champion. This is one of his harder fights within the promotion. And I want to see if we think he's going to be up for the task of facing Fabricio Andrade, who is the champion in Muay Thai at Bantamweight and just a beast of a puncher. The interesting part about that fight is Andrade is actually somebody who has a lot of experience in Muay Thai and kickboxing with something like 43 fights. Yeah, 43. Big body shot from Rod Ting. So let's get back to this fight. That was a nice lead left hook. And let's focus on what chance Haggerty has of defeating this MMA fighter, MMA champion, under kickboxing rules. They're going to be fighting under kickboxing rules, which means they're going to be putting on the bigger gloves... Rod Tang is a beast of an opponent, as we know, coming forward. Very dangerous, hard to slow down, leading with that left body hook repeatedly. Something that we see Canelo do very often in fights. And if you're confident in your defense, your ability to get the head off the center line, the lead body hook can be very effective. What's going to be interesting for Haggerty now that he's been in 1FC for quite a while, is making that adjustment back to the bigger gloves. Should be easier, but you never really know. Small differences can really affect you sometimes. His opponent, Andrade, is also used to fighting in 4-ounce gloves more recently. What I'd like to see is... Is he going to be able to deal with the pressure? Because when I watch Andrade fight, he's kind of like Haggerty. He's a big single punch guy, lots of power. And MMA fighters have had success throwing off guys, kickboxers, Muay Thai fighters who think they should just be able to walk through these MMA fighters. But sometimes just the slightly unorthodox striking style can throw them off. And Haggerty, as we know, is so crisp. So proficient. And I think he does best when he fights guys like that. It'll be interesting to see what happens on November 3rd when he has this battle for the kickboxing belt. Sharp little elbow there over top. Nice switch kick. This is a fight that I've wanted to cover for some time anyway just because it is a fantastic battle. Both guys exchanging... Some words after, just so that they're not going to be backing down. We'll probably get another look at that lead body hook. Ooh, it was right off the front kick. High front kick, and then step right in. There's a problem with the smaller gloves. You can see Haggerty goes to guard up his head, but because the kickboxing gloves will provide more protection, or a boxing glove, you're able to simultaneously block the body while protecting your head in an MMA glove. That is so much more difficult. You either have to compromise your head or leave the body open like that. Haggerty has done a good job putting on extra size because he used to fight at this weight class against Rod Tang here. I believe they're fighting at 135. Now he fights at 145. He put on a good amount of muscle. Looks quite a bit uh, thicker now. I think it's probably a good move for him. He's actually at my weight. And I would love to fight him under kickboxing rules. Haggerty has a really good, good front kick. Off the lead leg or the back leg. Good ability to time people, knock them over. Lead foot, lots of distance. The problem is when you have somebody who just doesn't care about being hit... And or has really good defense, sometimes those front kicks are not going to do what you need them to, which is control the range. And Andrade, from what I've seen, is very willing to take a shot. 
And when, oh, another, you could tell that one hurt again. A big body shot. They're going to have no clinch allowed when he does his kickboxing fight on November 3rd. Something that's not really allowed anymore. So hopefully he's just been training his boxing, really improve the boxing, get that on point. That was a nice left round kick there. He evaded the body shot and then snuck in that, uh, that left round kick. Doesn't work twice in a row, not against somebody like Rod Tang. That time he was on point, ready for it. I think it'll be very interesting and maybe even slightly difficult for Haggerty to just deal with the slightly, I'm going to call it wild, wild striking that the MMA fighters often bring. It doesn't mean sloppy necessarily. It just means when they throw, they throw very hard. There's not that same precision in shots, that same, I'm going to say, focus on the beauty behind the shots. That's one of the main things that I've noticed when I've uh, sparred with MMA guys, UFC fighters. There's a lot of technical things wrong. And because you're so used to dealing with really good technique, it can actually throw you off defensively to have things well, somewhat, somewhat, not massively, but somewhat sloppy coming at you. So one of the big things that I hope Haggerty will have been working is getting some rounds in with MMA fighters who are going to bring a slightly different striking style. I also noticed when I was watching Andrade that he is very comfortable, even in MMA gloves, just keeping his hands up and sort of using that Dutch guard, which means he's going to be very good at them with the bigger gloves. But as I already said, he has something like 43 fights in at a ring with most likely bigger gloves, so it's not foreign to him whatsoever. It's not like he's an MMA fighter who's never competed in a boxing glove. And it's definitely a fight coming up on the 3rd of November, just around the corner, that I'm going to be watching very closely. I'm very interested in this fight. Haggerty, in his last fight, KO'd Nong O oh to win the Muay Thai title. And that was impressive, because Nong O oh is one of the scarier dudes that I've seen. He just put some leather on his face and knocked him out with the hands. It was amazing. Here we are, we're going to move into round number three. Fighters do improve. Some fighters don't. But somebody like Haggerty, who is now 26 years old, back, back when we were watching this, it would have been more like, I think, probably 24. I believe this is around two years old. So he's improving. At that young age, you've you got to be improving all the time. Uh, but the answer to that body shot is not there. We were watching Rod Tang recently against Superlet going, my gosh, this guy's throws are on point. And he just demoed right there how sharp his throws are. That lead left hook is, is big. He doesn't lead with the jab as much as he's leading with the left hook. Good action right now. That front kick to the face off the lead leg works really well for Haggerty, but it's not a shot that looks like it's creating enough power to actually create the KO. And Rod Tang is just walking through it. I've actually been sparring with somebody recently, a guy who in Thailand, uh, who was down training in Thailand. We're going to have him on the channel fairly soon to bring some episodes to you guys as well. Fun guy to spar with. And he's a hard dude to back up. He will hardly ever step back, and it's interesting. Interesting working with him, going, hmm, this dude will just not take a backward step. Obviously, we're not hitting with full power or anything, but somebody like Rod Tang would probably be similar to that. You're just going, my gosh, what do I have to do to get this guy to take the backward step? Maybe we just had a little bit of a clash of heads there or something. Or... Uh, Hand, hand up in the face. That's my problem. 
One of my big concerns with these gloves, two big concerns with these gloves in Muay Thai. Number one, you're going to have eye pokes. Number two, more damage for the fighters. Smaller glove equals more damage. We know that from things like bare knuckle, right? You're going to take more damage as you get smaller and smaller with the glove or with no glove. Respect for these guys for stepping in and battling with a four ounce glove, which is essentially just like a, it feels like a piece of leather and cardboard over the knuckle. When I fought in the Bellator MMA gloves, I'm like, my goodness, these are small. But you do occasionally get little bumps and bruises, fingers to the eyes. I would prefer to see them all fighting in an uh, eight ounce glove for this weight class. Even a six ounce would be fine, in my opinion hard boxing glove rod tank just getting after it now geez another big body shot and i haggard he's a tough dude to the body too he's not somebody who would fold over easy it just shows you how hard rod tank is hitting nice switch kick there just tosses him over so we can see when haggerty gets a little overwhelmed and he's probably improved since this, and he probably learned a lot from this, but he has a little trouble. So it'll be interesting to see him up against Andrade, who won't bring the same pressure, but I think will bring something interesting. I don't think Haggerty's going to be able to just stand there and use beautiful technique and just control the fight. A little verbal exchange. Rod Tang wants him to step forward and brawl. Bad idea for Haggerty. Uh, finds the body again. Can he get up? He does. Impressive. Hunting that body. And lands. That is it. All right, guys. November 3rd. Check out 1FC. Big fight coming up.